Today, I'm gonna to show you some home decor DIYs using Dollar Tree items that are not only budget friendly, but look high end. Hey everyone, and welcome back. My name is Barbara, and if you're new to my channel, I love to do budget friendly home decor DIYs. If that is something that you enjoy, I hope you'll click that subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will notify you the next time I upload a brand new video. With all of that being said, let's get started on today's projects. For the first project, we're gonna make this super cute farm fresh pail. Using one of Dollar Tree's metal pails with the pre-drilled holes on each side for the hanger. After I remove the hanger, I will give this two thin coats of Waverly White chalk paint and I painted the entire piece. While that is drying, I used one of the pumpkin wreath forms from Dollar Tree and cut one of those pieces off using some wire cutters, and it was fairly easy to do. I took pliers and bent the outside end upwards, and you wanna make it a little bit higher than an L. I did um, curl it up a little bit higher to begin with, but you'll need something a little bit more than an L to be able to place that in the hole on the pail. I then painted it using some black chalkboard craft paint, which I purchased from Dollar General. And now that the pail has dried, and like I said, I did paint the entire piece inside and out, I wanna give it a little bit more of an enamel wear look. So I'm taking a wet wipe and the black chalk paint and just applying that around the top and bottom rim. And this just gives me a more precise placement of the paint. You could certainly use a sponge or a foam brush or whatever you like. This is just my personal preference. Now that that is complete, I'm also going to be using five beads. These beads I purchased in a very large bag from Amazon, which I have linked in my Amazon store in my description box if you are interested. I gave each one of these a coat of Waverly Antique Wax using a paintbrush, and then I just used a paper towel to wipe most of it off and then go back in and get the ends that I didn't get the first time. I'll set those to the side and make sure they dry before I apply them to my handle. Applying these with the small one first, and then I'll put the three slightly larger ones and then a small one on the end to create a wooden looking handle. Then I can apply my wreath form piece to the pail, and then using my pliers, I will bend that closed once I insert it into the pail on each side. Because I wanted my handle to be more centered and stay in place, I will apply a little bit of hot glue to the outside edge of the two smaller beads and hold that there until the glue sets so that the wood beads will stay at the top center of the pail. And then I do go in and make sure that I close those handles up securely so that they don't come off. I printed out on my regular printer Farm Fresh and this really cute barn silhouette. I have this as a free printable on my website, which is listed in my description box below if you are interested. It will print out the exact size that you see here. I cut it a little bit larger than the actual print, leaving a little bit of that paper on the outside edge so that I can blend that in with the white paint on the pail. I applied this using matte Mod Podge and I like to put a nice even layer of Mod Podge and then apply my paper and then go back over top of it with the Mod Podge to blend it in. And then I'll blend it in a little bit more outside of those silhouettes to make it look like one uniform piece. After that has dried, this cute project is finished. Super easy to make, and I love how it turned out. It is so beautiful. I hope you enjoyed project number one as much as I did. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. For project number two, we're gonna be making this beautiful blessed sign using one of Dollar Tree's silver trays, which are very nice, by the way. I'm going to give these a, these, I'm gonna give this a good solid coat of Waverly White chalk paint, and then 
after that dries, I'll go and touch up any places that I think that the silver might be showing through. After that dried, it has this beautiful embellishment on the top part of the tray, as well as the inside of the tray, but after I painted it with the chalk paint, you really can't see the embellishments on the inside. Again, I used a wet wipe in the same black chalkboard craft paint that I get from Dollar General, and went around the outside rim, and then gave it a little bit thicker placement around each of the corners. I am also going to take a clean wet wipe and just dab it into the paint and I don't have my finger in there. I am just very lightly going over the top part of the tray to bring out those beautiful embellishments at the top. I'll do that all the way around and let that paint dry before I apply my sticker. The sticker I'm using comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree that has thankful, grateful, and blessed. And I'm going to place this at the bottom right-hand corner of the tray using some matte Mod Podge. Um, it is very sticky, so it will stick to the tray, but to make sure that it did not peel off, I applied Mod Podge first, then I'll apply the sticker, and I will go back over that again with Mod Podge to blend it in and make it look like it was made to the tray rather than a sticker. And I do blend in a little bit more outside of the lettering because it is a matte finish. I just wanna make sure that everything blends in really well. After that dries, this project is finished. I love how it turned out. I think this is so farmhouse. It's almost farmhouse enamelware looking. It's just very unique and I love how it turned out. Let me know what you think of project number two. For project number three, we're gonna make this really cute wooden caddy. Using two of Dollar Tree's larger boxes with the lids, remove the lids and set them to the side. We'll save those for another DIY another day. We just need the box itself. Attaching two of the boxes together using some Gorilla Wood glue and hot glue and you kind of want to make sure you get similar size boxes. I know Dollar Tree, the boxes tend to be a little bit different. Just try to make sure that you have two of the very similar size. I like for everything that I make to have a very completed look and a smooth look. So I went in with some fast dry premium spackling and filled in the cracks on the outside edges so that it would look like one uniform piece. After it dried, I went in with some sandpaper and gave this entire piece a nice good sanding to make it nice and smooth. Using one of Dollar Tree's over the door wreath hangers, I took two pairs of pliers and I'm going to try to straighten this piece out as best I can. And it's fairly easy on the end where the curve is. It gets a little bit more difficult on the other side because it is bent straight across. So you just have to maneuver it a little bit more until you can straighten it out. You could cut it if you want to, but I wanted those rounded ends to stay the same so that I could have those rounded ends on the sides of my crates. Once I get it pretty much straight or close to straight, I'm gonna hold it over top of the crate and bend it at the top to manipulate the shape to create the handle for the um, caddy that we're making. After I get that pretty much to the shape that I want, I painted the wooden crate with two coats of a Waverly white chalk paint, and I did paint this entire piece inside and out. I also painted the handle portion that we went, whoops, sorry, before we get onto the handle, <laughs> I took the black chalkboard craft paint again with a wet wipe and went around the top edge of this wooden crate and then I gave it a little bit more it's almost like an enamelware look but a, sort of like a farmhouse I just added some paint here and there sporadically wherever I thought it might look nice and I did this around the entire piece including those outside ends and then I'll come in with a paintbrush and then make tiny little dots around some of those larger places that I painted to give it somewhat of a rust look. It's not really splattering. I'm just making a few little dots there. 
and of course you're going to want your paint to dry before you attach your handle. To attach my handle, I used E6000 because I wanted to make sure that it has a very nice permanent hold. You guys, I am backwards today. I painted the handle. <laughs> I painted the handle in the black chalkboard craft paint. Again, let that dry. Then I came in with the E6000. I put a very good, generous amount of E6000 on the end from the top to the bottom. And then I'm using some of Dollar Tree's um, clips that they have. They sell those cute little pink clips to hold it in place at the top so that I can do the same thing on the other side and put my E6000 and apply the handle there. After I get that in place, I realize that there is not enough pressure at the bottom of the handle to really let that glue set up. So I will come in and replace one of the small clips on each side with a larger clip or clamp. I keep saying clip, a clamp at the bottom. So it will give it nice, even pressure at the bottom of the clamp. I cannot talk today, you guys, at the bottom of the crate with the clamp to hold it in place. And I did let mine set up overnight for the glue to dry. And then you can decorate this however you like. It is pretty sturdy. I mean, I pulled on that handle and it didn't come off. So I am going to style mine using salt and pepper shakers as well as a really cute mini milk jug, like a metal milk jug that I found at Hobby Lobby. They had them on sale and it is so adorable. I love how this piece turned out. I think it is super cute. Let me know what you think. I would love to know what you think of project number three. Now we're gonna move on to project number four, which is my absolute favorite. It is this beautiful, kitchen scale. Using one of Dollar Tree signs, after I remove the hanger on the back, I'm going to take my hair dryer and try to heat up that glue and remove most of the paper. What paper I can't get off, I do sand down to a nice smooth finish, wipe the debris off from sanding it, and although I am going to spray paint this piece, I wasn't sure how well this sign would take the spray paint, so I will give it some base coat, like a primer coat of my Waverly White chalk paint, emphasizing mostly on the outside edges as well as the top part. I'm not gonna worry about painting the top center because I'm gonna cover that up. Using one of Dollar Tree's metal planters, and I love the shape of this. I thought this would be perfect for this project. And I'm also using one of the wood squares that Dollar Tree sells in a pack of six. I placed the bottom of the planter on two corners, made my markings, and used a handsaw to cut those two edges off and sanded it down to a nice smooth finish. I am going to apply the planter to the top part of the side. So the top of the planter will now become the bottom part of our scale. And I'm going to apply that to the back edge, leaving a little bit of distance at the front and the two outside edges. So a little bit of a lip on the front and the two outside edges. And you'll see in just a minute, I am attaching that with some E6000. And then I will apply that piece of wood onto the top part using E6000. Because you can press the bottom of this, well, it's now the top part, in and out, I wanted to make sure it had a nice sturdy place for me to apply the dowels for the top part to hold the top part of the scale. I set a can of spray paint on there and let that set up for a couple of hours. I wanted, well, about an hour to make sure that it was glued down. Using two of Dollar Tree's one and a quarter inch, they're called spouncer brushes or spouncer, spouncer sponges. I cut them down to two inches a piece and sanded it down nice and smooth. You want to make sure that you have those ends very smooth and even so that the top part of your scale will sit evenly when you put it together. I am just finding the center. I'm not making exact measurements about where I'm going to place those dowel pieces. I just wanted to make sure that I could line them up 
together in the center, somewhat just trying to make sure they're in the same place. I attach that using E6000. And again, I will set something heavy on this and let that set up for about an hour or two. And I'm just using one of Dollar Tree's long signs to set that on there for the E6000 to set up. For the top part of the scale, I'm using one of Dollar Tree's cake pans and a round wooden circle from Walmart. These came in a pack of six, I believe, for a couple of dollars. It was pretty rough, so I did sand it down until it was nice and smooth. And I'm gonna apply that to the center of the bottom of the cake pan to not only provide some weight distribution for the scale, but I wanted to make sure that those dowels would adhere. So I thought that they would adhere to the wood better rather than the metal cake pan. Using E6000, I applied the wooden part to the bottom of the cake pan and let that set up. Now that the glue is somewhat set, I can assemble the top of the scale onto the bottom using E6000 and just centering the cake pan as best I can on top of those dowels. And then I'll go put a few little like paint jars that I have just to give it a little bit of weight, and then I let it set overnight to make sure that the E6000 set up and that this wasn't going to come apart. The next day, I took it outside and I'm going to spray paint it with Krylon Fusion All-in-One Paint and Primer in matte white. I gave this two thin coats of the spray paint I waited about 20 minutes between the first coat and the second coat, and then I let it dry for about four hours before I did anything else with it. I also made sure I painted underneath the cake pan because you can see that. Using one of the plastic round plates from Dollar Tree, you get eight for a dollar, I gave that two coats of Waverly White chalk paint the two coats are on the outside rim in the front and the back, but I did paint the entire front portion of the plate because although I'm gonna place something on top of it, I wanted to make sure that the color was consistent. And you will see the back part of the outside rim of the plate, so I made sure I gave that two coats. Again, using a wet wipe and my black chalkboard craft paint, I went around the outside rim of this plate to give it that nice enamelware look. And again, this just helps me get a more precise placement of my paint. Using a, oh, whoops, sorry. I'm doing the same thing to the cake pan. I'm gonna go around the outside rim of the cake pan, and then I'm gonna give that just a couple of spots of just a little bit more paint, like a larger spot to give it more of that worn enamel wear look. Make sure that dries, and then I'm going to use a printable that I printed off, which I also have on my website. If you are interested, it will print in this size. And I'm gonna cut that out a little bit larger than the actual picture because I want to make sure I keep all of the black outside portion of that printable intact before I glue this down using Mod Podge. I just put a nice even amount on there, sealed it down, and then I will go over the entire front part of this plate, including the printout with the matte Mod Podge. You'll want to let that dry before you attach it to your scale. And originally I was going to place it at the bottom ledge of the scale and it would look super cute that way, but then I changed my mind and decided I wanted to raise it up a little higher and cover up those corners. Let me know if you like it better at the bottom or at the top covering the corners. I attached this using some hot glue and then this scale is finished. I love how it turned out. I have always wanted one of those antique looking kitchen scales, but they are so pricey. And I made this one for $4. I love how it turned out. Let me know what you think of this beautiful kitchen scale. 
You guys, if you have a favorite, please let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you for taking your time to watch my video. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.